Welcome back to HGTV Handmade. I'm Jennifer from Sea Lemon and I will be your guest host every Thursday for this month. I'm a big fan of print patterns and for this project, I'll show you how to make a damask pattern with your own DIY stencil. Damask designs originate from textiles and they're usually very ornate with floral motifs that are mirrored on both sides of the design. The stencil that you make can be used for a single bull design on a piece of decor or artwork, or it can be used for a much larger application like if you want to make an entire damask pattern on your wall. So here's how to get started. I first did some sketching of floral pieces that would make up the damask. The design you make is really up to you. You can just explore and figure out some motifs that you like, combine them and draw the same thing on both sides to get an idea of what your damask could look like. You can find a lot of inspiration just by searching damask online. You can try some leaf shapes or swirl droplet type shapes, anything to make it ornate and elegant looking. I decided to move forward with this sketch and I'm just drawing a line in the middle because I really only need this one half for the next part. On another piece of paper, I'm going to trace my stencil sheet so that I have a border in mind of how large to make this. Stencil sheet is basically a really thin piece of durable plastic. You can find it in art or craft stores or online. Now that I have the stencil area marked off on this piece of paper, I'm going to fold it in half so that I have two sides. I'm going to draw half of this sketch on one half of the paper. Don't worry too much about it being exactly like your sketch, just draw a rough outline because you can always fix it later. When you're done with that half, go over the lines you made with a marker or something dark. At this stage, you can define your lines and make your drawing a little more precise so that you can easily cut it out later. Then fold your paper in half to trace the design onto the other side. If your paper is too thick to see the lines, you can use a light table or a little thing that I like to do is a DIY light table, which is a window. It does the trick. This way you can make sure that your design is symmetrical on both sides, and now you have your design to trace onto your stencil. Your stencil might have a different texture on each side, and you want to trace this onto the rough side. Tape it to the border that you drew so it stays in place and then go over your design with a permanent marker. I like to use a different color just so it's easier to see. Then remove it from the paper and now you can cut out the pieces on a cutting mat with a craft knife. It's okay to take your time on this part. You can cut slowly because in the end your stencil will be of a better quality because you took your time cutting out the lines. After that, your stencil is ready to use on your project. For this one, I'm using acrylic paint on top of this wood panel, and I'm just making a simple piece of decor. I'm keeping it in place with painter's tape because it's really easy to remove, and using a sponge brush to apply the paint onto the stencil. You can also use a regular sponge, and you want to keep a vertical blotting motion so that the paint doesn't get underneath the stencil. You can apply the stencil in any way you want, I'm just stacking these to make a column of damask, and here's how the final piece turned out. You can try all sorts of placements of the stencil to make unique designs. For this next one, I'm going all out on a section of the wall with some gold acrylic paint. Instead of just placing the stencil one by one, I'm going to make one big circle of damask. So I flipped the stencil around and mirrored the top portion, then only used this piece of the stencil for the sides. This is pretty much the base of my pattern and I'm going to repeat this circle in offset columns right next to it. To keep it uniform, I'm lining up the top of the stencil with the middle of the base design. Again, painting with the same motion, blotting directly on top of the stencil. This is really hard to notice, but I accidentally forgot to turn the stencil around so the other circles don't look exactly like the center, but overall I think it still turned out to be a really nice pattern on the wall. The great thing about this stencil is that you can easily rinse it after you're done and you can continue to use it on multiple projects. I think this would look great applied to just about anything really. What would you apply this Damas stencil to? Tell me in the comments below and if you try this project out I would love to see your pictures so be sure to add hashtag HGTV Handmade to them. Subscribe to HGTV Handmade and hit that like button if you enjoyed this tutorial. To see last week's DIY, check out this video right here to learn how to add a faux marble pattern to your project. I'll see you guys next week.